Hello my soccer universe, we have a Champions League semi-final and curiously enough there are no English teams left but we have two German teams in there, we also had two Spanish teams being eliminated. Yeah, this was quite quite interesting, we, this time we did not have all glorious action. Tuesday was probably of all the four quarterfinal days the best one. Uh, where we start, started out with a completely different semi-final than what we got with and in between with all possible permutations so this was really really exciting especially early in the second half it really went all over all crazy all mad uh, but then Wednesday yesterday was kind of meh I mean I said in my short short video a little bit too much anxiety especially from the Arsenal side I have to say and yeah Real Madrid also showed some um, I don't want to say anxiety it was a little bit more a uh, whole lot of respect towards Manchester City by simply parking the bus and it worked out for them and that also means now that we're with the holders City, City out and Real Madrid move, moving on I think Real Madrid have to be considered the favorites from now on but as I said we have two German teams in the semis in such a way that they still can meet in London like they did 11 years ago with Dortmund and Bayern who both can salvage their rather paltry seasons so far and then you know if Leverkusen would win the Europa League I mean the Bundesliga would have a marquee year right there uh, two notes before we go into the game uh, what this also means is that um, we have that England probably will now not get a fifth spot. This might go to the Bundesliga. A lot of that will probably hinge on how Leverkusen will do against West Ham and how uh, all the English teams will do in uh, the lesser competitions. But we know already that Liverpool are more or less out against Atalanta, although I keep thinking they may be able to turn it around. West Ham against Leverkusen definitely outside, so it's only hangs on Villa. Whereas the Bundesliga still have many many teams in there so very very likely Bundesliga five Champions League spots and with Leverkusen well, Leverkusen <laughs> there will not be a sixth spot I think for the Bundesliga as far as I see it at the moment but I might be wrong as well and then lastly uh, with Arsenal being eliminated and this is the big story here in Austria and I find it a really really weird and odd we now know also the teams that will take part in the first uh, club world cup and if i read to you the names we have of course the champions league winners chelsea real madrid and manchester city and this year's champ champ champions league winner then uh, who is already qualified then we have also bayern psg uh inter we have porto benfica dortmund juve and salzburg that doesn't make much sense when I knew that uh, Arsenal need to win the Champions League for Salzburg to not get in I really want to Arsenal win it because we don't need the extra money for Salzburg here in Austria but I guess yeah the Austrian Bundesliga <laughs> wouldn't you know it will send someone to the club World Cup a competition that I still don't know what to think much about but Let's get to, to all the action, probably to uh, at least nominate the big upset, although we could see it potentially coming. We, meaning PSG going to Barcelona, not the new camp, just the Mosheric Stadium, and that I think was a factor. Uh, that I thought uh, that PSG might turn turns turn around um, and winning it. However, it was not so straightforward. Yes, PSG had probably more of the, uh, control of, of the game, but uh, an individual effort by Yamal uh, puts it to Rafinha, who I think with his knee, kind of, it, it went weird with Lin and Barca have a 1 lead, a 4-2 lead on aggregate. And at that point, I thought, yeah, if uh, PSG will need, will need to come out, and Barca can launch counter attacks, and you know, with uh, Lamal and Dembele and so on, they will probably get get their chances. It will be really, really hard, and some something extraordinary needs to happen. And something extraordinary did happen. Uh, Barcola runs through and is brought down by Ronald Araujo just outside the box, uh, which may have been crucial for me. Uh, I'm totally right that this is a red card. I mean, he is pulled back outside out of box he's last man there's no way the Kubarsi uh, is coming to Barcola uh, so he's denying a clear goal scoring opportunity the only thing is that there is potentially a leeway that the referee could see whether this um, 
foul carries into the box and then he could give a penalty, which would not mean a red card for Araujo. I also am thinking that from Araujo's point of view, you have a 4-2 lead. I think conceding here, let him go. Let him go, because that red card changed the complexion of the game. It absolutely did. Yes, PSG need an example. Who else? Barcola again assists and Dembele scores again against Barcelona. Uh, what he has not been doing for Barcelona a whole lot. Uh, and then PSG tried to pressure to actually go already um, with a level score into halftime. That did not happen. However, then uh, Vitinha, nice Hakim assist, manages uh, to level the score in the 54th minute. And then another really, really uh, unnecessary penalty given away by... Um, Joao Cancelo, and that was kind of the deciding moment in the tie. Mbappé sets up, finally puts some stamp on this tie and scores the 3-1. And for me, there was no coming back. Yes, there was a chance for Gün Gündogan where he potentially wanted a penalty. For me, it was not a penalty. There was Lewandowski have, having a chance, but at that point, PSG was squarely in control of, of the game. And even bringing Joao Felix on and, and so on didn't really change much of them. But Peyton um, creates a chance uh, that in, in the end he can tap in and PSG make the remontada. And I think banish now all the Barcelona demons out of their uh, history and move on. Uh, for me, not only was the Red Cat to Araujo a major uh, turning point, but I also find that taking them off uh, Yamin Lamar and bringing on Inigo Martinez. Uh, yes, you need to bring on another defender, but taking Yamal off the one player that is kind of an X-factor for you, that for me was also a curious decision taken from Xavi. So kind of showing, I think Louis, Louis Enrique didn't want to get cute this time around. He just made the, uh, he just pulled out his strongest lineup and said, yeah, pound for pound, we are better than Barcelona. And in the end, that was showing and Barcelona are out. Still reaching a quarter quarter final, given their financial was a problem, not so bad, but a semi final would have been much better. So, this was the first Spanish side, side out. Um, and I think on that, that, that even most La Liga fans would have thought that, you know, uh, we may get two in there. However, Atletico Madrid also a little bit inexplicably don't show up again away from home. And they tasted a little bit of their own mad medicine. You know, uh, when they eliminated Inter. Uh, they did not. Uh, they were still alive because Inter did not convert many chances because Inter was the far superior team in both ties. It's just that Atletico Conco Madrid. Um, I don't want to say got, 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 got lucky, but Inter didn't take their chances, especially in the first leg, and then uh, the game was played on Atleti's terms. This time around, Atleti, I think, went a little bit too far back. And curiously, playing in blue and white when in the home leg the. The home jerseys were working quite well. Uh, also, was in interesting that you know these are Schalke colors. So for Dortmund fans, it was really really easy to cheer against Atletico Madrid. Similarly, I think for Barcelona, it was easy to cheer against PSG uh, playing in all white. But that's not news, right there. But yeah. Um, Atletico being rather defensive, and sorry, my voice today is not uh, the greatest. Still having a little bit of a cold. Um, so um, Dortmund coming all out. However, if Morata converts this one counter-attack, I think this could change the tie because this all was needed. But then it goes very, very quickly that Brandt uh, converts a chance uh, five for final and then uh, Matzen a little bit later after Sab Sabitzer assist makes it 2-0. The tie is turned around. Dortmund are now in the lead. However, uh, that was not it. At that point, you may have feared that uh, Dortmund is going to run, run away with it, but um, Simeone made the right changes. Barrios and Correa and Riquelme came on at half time, and it did not take, take long until Ma uh, Mats Hummels with an own goal. Hermoso took the shot, uh, makes it again level score, and then Angel Correa, who had already missed another sitter before that, and again <laughs> missed chances for Atletico Madrid. What was working for them? in their favor against Inter did not work in their favor this time around. Correa needs to make that, that goal. He later equalizes uh, the, the score on the night, meaning on aggregate, Atletico again in the lead. 
And at that point, I think Atletico probably should have pushed on. And again, I think they fell a little bit too far back. Uh, another uh, uh, um, crucial change was Ad Adema coming off, Bino Gittens coming on. Uh, Adema had himself run ragged and was not really a fact factor because he could not really use his speed. And then Sabica, who I think was the man of the match. Yes, it was given to Julian Brandt, but even Julian Brandt uh, said, you know, uh, Sabica was really, really, really good. A great cross in and Fulkrug attacks uh, the near post. Had, has a brilliant equalizer. I uh, was also curious that after the goal, uh, you know, they both of these players uh, clapping each other, but then Fulkrug puts the arm around Sabitzer, and Sabitzer kind of like, put this away, put this away. I mean, it was not much, but I, I, I still find this rather awkward to see. Uh, and then a little bit later, Dortmund try to use the momentum, push on, and Sabitzer gets the ball on the edge of the box and puts it in. And 4-2 and that after a two goal performance at Gladbach, now two assists and a goal uh, putting Dortmund through. Yes, Atletico Madrid were then trying, but the chances were not coming again. So Dortmund used their home field uh, advantage to move on. I would even argue this is salvaging Dortmund's season, now playing against PSG that they didn't play well in the group stage. And yes, Dortmund PSG were in the group of death. The both teams made it to the semifinals. Yes, luck of the draw in there as well. But as a Milan fan, I'm noting this and saying, yeah, um, um, could have been more in there because I still maintain that Milan should was the, at least the second best team in this group, but did not convert the chances. And we go back to the old subject. So uh, this was the Tuesday. Really, really e e exciting. We had we started out having a Barcelona Atletico Madrid semifinal. We end up with the Dortmund uh, PSG semifinal. But in between, we had Atletico playing PSG in the semis. We had Dortmund playing Barcelona in the semis. Now we have Dortmund playing PSG in the semis. So there you go. Um, let's go to yesterday, to the other German home team, which was Bayern. And that game was a rather tough watch. Arsenal tried to lull everyone with their possession. Bayern said, yeah, let's see what you got. Uh, Arsenal didn't have much. And I think the only really exciting stuff was when uh, I think it was Maserabi having a chance midway through the first half. I think there was also a timid Martinelli shot that Neuer could save. But this game I thought had nil 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 written all over it and going all the way to penalties. Did not happen because starting in the second half, Bayern came out with a whole lot of more oomph. Yes, the first chance actually fell to Arsenal there, but then it was all Bayern. And in my short video, I said it was Kane, no, it was Goretzka hitting uh, the crossbar with a header. Uh, I think it was the crossbar. And then uh, on the rebound, Guerrero, uh, you know, there uh, was a double deflection, also hits the post. Bayern racked up the pressure quite some and then uh, Kimmich uh, actually scores after Guerrero uh, cross in uh, Martinelli completely loses him and he had had it in and honestly that settled the game I remember that I think there was an Oedegaard chance that then should have been resulted in a corner later lay, lay on but there was more that there were uh, chances to fall into Sané and so on I think Bayern were closer to the 2-0 if there was another goal than to the 1-0 and again European experience proves to be the difference I would say I mean Arsenal were already struggling against the Porto side that is way beyond them uh, uh, way below them not beyond them and this Bayern side I think if just on pure form I think Arsenal uh, would have been the better and the more talented team. I mean, what Bayern is showing in Bundesliga, but it's just the experience come through. We are Bayern by Munich and we know we have been there. We've done that. And even if we have a crap season, we threw all our eggs in this uh, Champions League basket, whereas Arsenal still is eyeing half the Premier League. However, Arsenal have lost their mojo a little bit and so are out of the competition right now. And that also, I say it again, begrudgingly, Salzburg qualify for the darn FIFA Club World Cup through that. And then we had the big one uh, between Manchester City and Real Madrid. I find it really cute how the Manchester City fans tried to make a TIFO uh, to uh, emulate the European fans. It just doesn't work when you... <laughs> the, the City atmosphere! I don't wanna... Uh, all the other Premier League players, they at least try to have their, you know, typically English at atmosphere. The atmosphere at the Etihad always seems fake to me. I'm sorry to say. 
I'm really sorry, sorry as I say. Uh, it tries to do some, some, some something, but just doesn't live up to it. Uh, also, uh, the game was very, very simple. Real Madrid came out and said, Manchester City are gonna pass ourselves to de uh, pass us to death. We gonna prevent that. And we have our players. Yes, there's Carl Walker that can um, neutralize Vinny Jr., which mostly he did. So uh, Athletic uh, Real Madrid will not have this uh, opportunity all that, that, that much, but in the end we keep it tight and we let City beat us, maybe with long distance shots, which didn't come all that much as well. Sometimes the pressure that came from Manchester City was really, really intense without creating chances. And while Cal Walker neutralized Vinny Jr. quite well, I think he was also responsible for the goal because the pass uh, from uh, to Vinny Jr. He was so busy waving his hand up to uh, claim this was offside, this was offside, that he completely forgot about Rodrigo, who was right behind him. Rodrigo takes the shots, is saved by Ederson, falls back to him, 1-0 Real Madrid. And at that moment, the game was easy uh, for Real Madrid, who seemed crazily comfortable defending this. I mean, such a low block. Uh, they took out basically all the speed that Manchester City could uh, have and said, let's pass ourselves. Away. Yes, there's Foden, there's Grealish, there are good, great, great dribbles. There's, of course, De Bruyne who can see a pass from everywhere. I even thought, and he got panned a lot, but um, I really felt that Holland actually had an intense game. He created chances, he had had chances. He hit uh, at one point, was it the crossbar or, or, or the post? I think it was the crossbar. Uh, so there were chances there for him as well. However, either it was saved by Lunin, uh, who did not look the safest, but the Real Madrid defense held tight. And then they had their occasional chances to attack as well. Uh, so the game looked kind of one-sided and uh, from one side I, I really felt that the pressure for City is getting too much. I mean, at times all the Real Madrid players, it felt like were in their own box. And it was like handball for a City. However, do you remember many chances except for what I just mentioned? And then, yes, Doku runs through, uh, it replaces Grealish and uh, gives the ball to De Bruyne, who from a short distance can put it in. 76 minutes. And then I thought there was the chance that the momentum swings towards City. And De Bruyne misses a sitter, an absolute sitter uh, that should have made it 2-1, that, that, that would have settled the tie. But then again, more of the same in the second half. Again, pass, 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 pass. There were a few long-range shots but it was kind of uh, empty. Uh, I was also curious that Holland was then replaced by Alvarez. Seemingly he wanted to come off. And also De Bruyne and Nidhi Nid 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 was also replaced by Kovacic, born in Linz. Uh, of course, my hometown. So yeah, I, I, I still maintain, although he only played in the youth team, he's the most successful last player of all time. Uh, in the end, if it wasn't Antonio Rüdiger showing up uh, in at, at the end of the first half of all over all, all time there, but a striker like Vinny Jr. who also had come come off, I actually think that Real Madrid could snatch this. I always had the feeling that Real Madrid they will get this one goal somehow, somewhere. That did not come, so it goes all the way to penalties, and I think. City wanted to really have the way they, they want to want if they wanted to shoot the penalty from their own fans. I still think this is actually a disadvantage. It would be better to go on the other side because, you know, pressure, uh, um, expectation and, and so on. It's not so much the support. You always have to think that in penalty shootout situations, you also have to more think about the negative than the positive effect that something like that could have. And then they also go first, although uh, they were discussing. Should we go first? Should we not? We went first. And Julian Alvarez duly converts and Modric uh, penalty is saved. Actually, no, not a bad save by Ederson. But then Modric, and I don't think he thought much about it, but he just yanks the ball in anger into the stands. Did not see a yellow card, uh, uh, interesting enough. And so when Bernardo Silva comes up, there is no ball. And you can see uh, re the referee players, where's the ball, where, where, where's the ball? And suddenly comes from the stands. But I honestly think this had unsettled Bernardo Silva enough. I don't think that Modric did this on purpose, but uh, I think this helped. And then the Barrero Silva penalty, uh, yes, he wanted to go high down, down the middle, and Lonin remained standing. 
it looks abject and this is why I and I'm so happy that Lunin does it because finally goalkeepers realize you know sometimes we just don't have to dive we don't need to look like the idiots when the penalty goes down the middle uh, we can actually sometimes save it by playing uh, by, 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 uh, by standing up and really really love that one but that was also a momentum swing because when Modric missed the penalty if City quickly can convert you have all the advantage. I don't think that uh, Real Madrid can easily come back from that. Yes, it can always happen. But that penalty miss was really, really bad. And then Bellingham converts for Real, uh, for Real Madrid. Kovacic has a weak effort saved by Lunin. And then all the momentum is going to Real Madrid. And then also it has to be said, the players that stepped up for Real Madrid were rather curious. We had uh, Lucas Vazquez converting rather easy with Nacho Fernandez converting. Meanwhile, Foden puts City a little bit back. Ederson, goalie, saves it well and then goes all down to Antonio Rüdiger, who converts by the inside of the post. You know, uh, all three that I just said, uh, Lucas Vazquez, Nacho and Rüdiger are not uh, expert penalty takers. And you could see it when the Rüdiger shot. I mean, he concentrated well. He, you could see his all the will, all, all the power. I'm gonna get, 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 get this in. So the, the focus was right. But when he hit the post, you could see there was a second where he was unsure. Is this going in or not? And then he sees this in. And celebration for Real Madrid. They have slain the big city dragon, it has to be said. And so now Real Madrid find themselves the favorites against Bayern Munich. 55-45, an absolute Champions League classic. We're on the other side, uh, uh, PSG are now slight favorites over Borussia Dortmund. So uh, could we see Kylian Mbappé? have the last game of the season against the Real Madrid before he moves to Madrid. That would be a storyline. Of course, we also have the pure German final again in London. You know, memories of 2013, so 11 years later. That would also be an interesting one. And Harry Kane could win a Champions League in his home hometown. So there you go. Of course, I think a PSG Bayern final would also be a replay. As uh, you know, there have been some uh, interesting Dortmund uh, Real Madrid duels as well. As for the overall favorites, it is Real Madrid and PSG, of course, because both of them are the favorites to move on to the final than Bayern ahead of Dortmund. So that was it for me from the Champions League semi final. As I said, I think we have interesting semi finals. I Personally, would have wished that Arsenal was still alive, so we have um, you know four different countries and not having two German teams in there. But that's the way it went, and we will live with that as well. The games will be played. I don't know which one will go first. I honestly would think it will be Bayern against Real Madrid first uh, on the 30th of April and the 1st of May. Kind of colliding also with the Austrian Cup final, which I find curious, but hey, there you go. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the semifinals. Who do you think will win and lift the trophy? Will it be Real Madrid again? I think they have now a ridden. Or will we see an old German final and how about PSG? That's all there. In any case, I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!